Good afternoon and welcome to Keswick the Deeper Life and your preacher Brian Mason. We shall commence our service with the reading of Psalm 8. O Lord our, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of, of him, and the son of man that thou dost visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honour. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. O sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. The Lord himself will add his blessing unto that reading of his word. The hymn for today Let all mortal flesh keep silence That's the hymn A most amazing hymn In these days of Of many, many voices Here we have a hymn Showing us who God is in all his majesty in all his glory in all his holiness and that's why as creatures of him we need to give him his rightful place let all mortal flesh keep silence and we fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for we blessing in his hand. Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to demand. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood. Lord of lords, in human vesture, in the body and the blood. He will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. Rank on rank, the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day that the powers of hell may vanish as the darkness clears away at his feet the six-winged seraph, cherubim with sleepless eye, 
veil their faces to the presence. As with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, 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 Lord Most High. Heavenly Father, you are to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. For you, along with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, are the Holy One. To be seen as holiness, to be worshipped as the Holy One. And in these days where there is so little of making known from thy word the holiness of God himself, may once more there be that teaching from thy word which calls sinners to repentance, which brings before sinners the challenge of the cross, which reveals the sinfulness of man and the holiness of God and the means whereby hell-deserving sinners can be reconciled with a holy God by repentance of sin and the cleansing of the heart through the blood of thy, de thy dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, draw unto thyself those who still have to be drawn to thyself, drawn through the Lord Jesus Christ as the Saviour. Those who have to be saved before that great and terrible day of the Lord comes, when the day of grace has ended and all have been gathered in, who have to be gathered in. And in this light, may the king, those who are in the kingdom of God Realize who you are and that you come to dwell within the hearts of those who have been cleansed by the blood of thy Son. And that we will see more and more of who you are dwelling within us the Holy One, the One whom all in heaven worship and adore. For this is asked, O Father, in the name above all other names, out of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, that you will receive the glory Amen. We're continuing our study into the Gospel of St. John. And today we're looking in chapter 11. 
a very long chapter, so I'll not cover it all today. Well, it's a wonderful chapter. Like all the Word of God is so wonderful, so amazing. And here we see Jesus. And he will speak words which no one else had ever uttered before. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So these dear, dear people were already well known to Jesus. And when we think of, of Mary, she would have been a cast off of society. Others would not have wanted anything to, to, to do with her. And when, on that day that she anointed Jesus, others frowned upon this as waste. The religious ones who were in that house at that time were speaking that as though Jesus did not know about Mary and her life, which was a life of a sinner. But yet Jesus, he accepted her. And she came to know the forgiveness of her sins. He dealt so graciously, so kindly with her. And that encourages us to know that whoever we are, wherever we are, whatever our past might have been, we're all in some way, in the same need as Mary. Yes, we may not have, have been doing what she did, which these religious ones were very critical of. But we all have the same sinful nature. which manifests itself in sins. And Jesus is the one who the Father sent so that he took the place of the condemned sinner at Calvary. And that the wrath of God was laid upon him so that through his death his blood was is able to cleanse the foulest the most abhorrent because We all need forgiveness. We all need the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. And the Father is waiting to receive us, waiting to become not just our God, our Father too. 
have you experienced within your heart the forgiveness of sin? Have you brought your sin to the sin bearer, Jesus, and let him take away your sin? Repenting, I am a sinner in the sight of a holy God. Yet you have taken my place. You have taken my punishment. And you are able to forgive me. And to give me a new life. A life so different to the one that I have been living. I've been living for myself. Instead of living for God, you were created in the image of God. Are you going to give Him His rightful place in your life? For well, there's no, no life, no real life, outside of God in Christ. And here was Mary. She received a new life. And how she came to understand Jesus. And how that she wanted whenever she saw him to give him of the very best of her life. Are we like that? Are you like that? Wanting to give him his rightful place in your life, that he becomes his life within your life. It's a wonderful thing that privilege that God gives us. Verse 3 Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Jesus wasn't very far away from Bethany at the time. And his dear, dear friend Lazarus was sick. Yet the sisters knew that Jesus was well able to meet the need of their brother. Now how did Jesus react to this? Did he come rushing? He could have said the word and Lazarus would have been healed instantly. He could have been healed, yes, before, without Jesus actually physically going to Bethany, to that home. He's God. Nothing's beyond him. There's healing in himself. The healing of the whole person. spirit, mind, body, everything. He's the one who is perfect life. But yet he chose not to go because there was a greater purpose which had to be brought out that he is life, and life which is eternal, and that life is found in himself, life beyond this life, never-ending life, yet started here on earth. So Jesus said to the disciples, This sickness is not unto death, 
knowing that, in fact, Lazarus would physically die. But for the glory of God, Jesus was to take of this situation and use it for the glory of the Father. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Come out with it to the disciples, the Son of God. He made it very clear to them who he was. Now Jesus loved Martha and their sister and Lazarus. There was a very special bond between them. He had cap captured their love. He had won their hearts. And he would show them something far greater by what was going to take place. It had to be death first before there could be resurrection. There had to be death first before the seeing of even greater glory of God. And it's the same in the Christian life. There's a death before a resurrection. And along the way too, there will be many deaths. Deaths to the things of ourselves. Deaths to the things that once meant everything to us. Because God, he will only take away from us that which is hindering, bringing out the greater glory to himself. We may not understand things at the time, but we'll see later that a death to something, whatever it be, is a way and entrance into receiving more and more of the life which God wants to give us. Give us more and more of himself. More and more that he can do through us. That's the resurrection. Opening the way into more and more of himself until we see in Christ all that God is and seeing, seeing Christ for who he is. Everything outside of him pales into insignificance. Not being concerned over excitement in the flesh, not being concerned of the things of this world, but in Christ the eternal things, that which matters for the kingdom and that kingdom which will not just be on earth, but the kingdom, when the time is over on this earth and we gone to be with him forever in those wonderful mansions that he has gone to prepare. But let us concentrate on what he wants to do whilst we're still here. And as we see him in this particular account, we see more and more of his glory. 
and his person. As the eternal son of God. As equal with the father. When he had heard therefore that he was sick. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. Yes, if Jesus had suddenly gone, no, he wanted to make it that it would be clear to everyone that what was to take place was absolutely humanly impossible. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. No light in him. Let us just consider that. He's not talking here of lights in, on a dark night, like we would see street lights, I know they wouldn't have had street lights there. But he's speaking of an inner light here. The light of God within our beings. Of himself being the light. Because he was to say, I am the light of the world. And it has to be that inner light seeing as he sees. And when we think about it, when we're not in Christ and Christ in us, we're in darkness, we're cut off, we don't have the life of God within our souls, Yes, it may, may be something which is there, but it has to be brought to life. It has to be that what is preventing that communication between the soul, which is, as it were, dead, because it doesn't have the life of God within it, it needs igniting, as it were, brings He's bringing to life, bringing into communion, communication, into fellowship with the very Creator Himself. And that's through Christ Himself. These things said He, and after that He saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, how he shall do well. His disciples, by then, had been with him quite some time. Yet, time after time after time, they could not understand how he spoke. He spoke words of life, words which are spiritual. And they could only see in the natural. That's how each one of us needs to be brought into that communion, communication with God. Otherwise, we can't understand the things of God. They're foolishness to the natural mind. 
They are utter nonsense to the world. And even when we have become Christ, there is that daily need to walk in His light. Otherwise, we will fall back, we will backslide. It's walking continuously in the light of God in Christ. Wanting to go on with him, to know more and more of this, this person, the person of the Son of God himself. What an opportunity these di disciples had. What an opportunity we have too. Have you taken that opportunity? Are you walking in the light with him? Because he will show us more and more of himself. He will do more and more of what he wants to do in us and through us. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He can't have said anything more plain. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. A very strange thing to say. Thomas, who was to doubt his Lord, that he was still alive, that he had come back from the dead, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, about two roughly two miles away, so it wasn't very far. They say Jesus delayed, intentionally delayed his going. Lazarus had to die. It had to be in the humanly impossible because Jesus had to bring further revelation of himself. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha, Unto Jesus, Lord. That's something, something very revealing to us. She called him Lord. She acknowledged him as God. As revelation to her heart. That here the one who would come was someone who was more than a man. He, the one sent by God to be the Messiah of God's people. If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Oh, what, what faith she had that Jesus would have healed Lazarus had he been there. She had no doubt within her heart that that would be the case. But there was something far greater that Jesus was to show her. And it's the same with our own lives. As we go on with him, 
there's always something far greater that he will show us because he has come to give life the very offer of life the sustainer of life has come not to give ordinary life come to give abundant life we're not called to be ordinary as Christians we're here to be extraordinary because the extraordinary one lives within us Jesus saith unto her thy brother shall rise again Martha saith unto him I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day she knew the word of God she knew the teaching and she was expecting that on that day when the dead in Christ shall rise her brother would be one of them Jesus saith unto her I am the resurrection and the life had anybody uttered those words before no one had uttered them before no one was qualified to utter those words for he the creator he the one who had made man was the only one who could bring life true life eternal life into men and women he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die oh those who were there at that time and heard those words what did they make of them they would have appeared as a great mystery to them yet Jesus spoke them and he was about to show that he had the power <coughs> of life <coughs> and he said quite openly believest thou this that was a challenge do you believe what I'm talking about? Those, that's the challenge today too. Do you believe in what Jesus is talking about? His message still has to go forth today to those who are walking in darkness those as it were are in spiritual death those who have to come forth believest thou this the devils believe about Jesus yet it's a great great mystery that most are still walking people are still walking in darkness because they don't seek to receive the life of God and the light of God and part of it is down to a failure within the church within the body of Christ to do that which Christ has called upon it to do because one word is so missing in these days and the word which Jesus himself used on, on a number of occasions the word repent that has to be the same message 
that the Son of God himself uttered. Because when he considered that it was absolutely vital to call sinners to repentance, why does the church not do it in these days? There has to be an awakening, a great awakening to what God is calling the church, his body to do in these days. To point to the one who went to the cross and the one who is raised from the dead. To bring us into that right relationship with the Father. A life of, of the righteousness and the purity and the holiness of Christ within those who are his. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. Very few during Jesus' ministry had that revelation, had that understanding of whom he was. The Son of God which should come into the world. Yes, she saw him there as the one, as the Son of God. Are you seeing him as the Son of God? Have you given him your, his rightful place? And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. We'll leave it at that for today and finish the chapter next time. I shall be back tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. British time with the program Ever Increasing Reformation. God bless you. <laughs>